What is up guys, the Mighty McGrew here today with another tutorial. Today we're going over Flans, the Grief Prevention Claim mod. In some cases it's also a plugin, but uh, we're going over the mod today. Very much the same, I don't really think there's a lot of difference. But anyway, this mod allows you to claim your stuff. Very similar to the Gold Shovel Claiming System. It's uh, really easy, intuitive, it's just uh, very similar actually, but instead of a Gold Shovel we use the golden hoe and when you scroll over and you select your golden hoe you'll see in the chat exactly how many claim blocks you have plus the bonus that you get the bonuses are given via admin commands or with voting or you know, there are a few other methods of getting blocks uh, in some servers you might encounter that you'll be able to accrue blocks over time at uh, whatever the server's rate is set so to start claiming if you're familiar with gold shovel you already have guessed how this works but if you're not it's really simple, really easy. So say we want to claim this uh, stone structure here, this stone boulder or what have you. So you start with one corner and you, you got to imagine that you're going to draw a square over top of this area. So you start with this corner and it's going to claim everything from here all the way over to here. But this is not where you click. You go to the opposite corner and that's going to claim in, in imagine like a, a, a square drawing tool in paint. And then bam, you've got this area. Now by default, you have to claim at least a hundred blocks worth. And one of the different things between Flans and Gold Shovel is that in Gold Shovel, it claims from bedrock to world top, all the way from the bottom to the top. But with Flans, I think I heard that it goes down 10 blocks, but that it's smart enough so that when you start building down, it'll actually move your claim size down with you. So, I mean, virtually it's from bedrock to top, but not right off the bat. So that's how it starts. And then if you just use a stick, you can see where people have claimed. And it's really nice that uh, you can look off into the distance a little bit. I mean, there is some limitations here. I think it's uh, maybe about 20 blocks, give or take. And then if you, uh, Look at where you've claimed. It's a bam. Move the Miami Groove Club. So once you've claimed, you know, what do you do? All right, well, the first thing you should do after you claim something is make sure it's protected. You can do this by opening your chat, type slash plan, and then you'll have a whole bunch of stuff come up that you can do. We're going to start off with the menu. You can type this in or tab it in, however you please. You open the menu, it opens a nice little GUI where you've got, you know, uh, TNT for clothes. Uh, global permissions. This is this is going to allow everybody. So whatever you put in here, it's going to let everybody do. It's going to apply to everybody until you get into permission groups. So we'll start with edit global permissions. In here, you're going to see all these different icons, and they've all got uh, different different uh, claim permission interactions. So like edit claim, you probably don't want to give this to anybody that you don't trust a lot. Otherwise, they're going to you know it's going to leave the door open to potentially get messed around a lot, you know. Uh, edit perms, this is also another one that's that's pretty big. You need to trust someone a lot before you give them this kind of privilege. Potions, uh, not editable in every case, but if you have access to the config for this mod, you can go and change this. Uh, the ability to break, the ability to place, open containers, these are gonna be your big ones right here. The open containers, interact with blocks. I think that's just like a, a simple right click function, uh, being able to mess with buttons and levers, trap doors, fence gates, doors, uh, let them access beacons and change that stuff. Uh, the ability to use beds, anvils, pressure plates, no blocks, redstone. There's there's so much stuff. Uh, I'm not really going to go over every single one of these because like it's it like I said, it's a really intuitive GUI. You can you can make sense of this yourself if you decide to use this mod. Yeah, this is the really easy to use. You just toggle it true. If you want people to be able to use containers, same for you know anything else. It's, it's really simple, true or false. You want people to use stuff or not use stuff, break stuff, play stuff, what have you. So we're just gonna mark all this false for now. And I think some of it is enabled by default, so like enchanting inner chest, portals. There's there's a, a, a little number of things that are just automatically enabled. 
But uh, we won't go through and do all of that. Uh, it can stay. This is a big one right here. This is what's going to stop people from even being able to come in your claim. If you don't want people coming in your claim, I would suggest you set this to true. Also, editing the other permissions, this would definitely stop them from all of it. It would stop them from even being able to come inside. And we can we can uh, vet or filter certain people being able to come in later with permissions, which we'll cover shortly. For now, though, we're going to go into subclaims. So to do subclaims, you want to hold your, your tool, whatever your tool of choice is set by default, it's the golden hoe. And then you type plan switch and you can see it pop up there automatically and take a note that the m is capital here and it has to be capital otherwise it won't work you plan switch mode and then it'll it'll show you that you did it correctly by saying in chat entity mode switch editing mode switch to subclaim okay so now that we've switched to subclaim we need to make a subclaim so a subclaim is basically a little claim within a a, a big claim i guess for lack of better words so it's a little claim inside of your claim that you can give special permissions to that only apply to that area. So say I want people to be able to break this block in this part only, but nowhere else. Can't break anything else anywhere else in the claim. So you would stand inside of your subclaim and you open your plan menu. And there it is. There's what I was looking for earlier, subclaim menu. So now you can go in here and tell it what you want specifically changed in the subclaim area. So in this instance, it's gonna go by default until you tell it otherwise. So if we tell it true, then somebody can come into our claim and break right here, as far as the claim is concerned. Now, if they go outside the claim, then it really doesn't matter unless somebody else has claimed that area, you know, if you got neighbors, or what have you. And now my wife will come over and try to break this block. And there you have it. And then you should also be able to fill that hole. And there you go. But then if you come over here to this block, you can't break that. Right. So the only place you can make any edits as far as breaking and placing are in this subclaim. Subclaims are marked with white smoke. And the main part of the claim is marked with the gold smoke or the yellow smoke. Now, we can touch on permissions. So we can set permissions specifically. Now I'm gonna make a new subclaim. We'll just make this little this little subclaim right here. And it can be it can be right on the line. You just can't go out. It has to stay within your actual claim border. And so what we'll do is we'll change the permissions on this one so that it's default. Now we're not gonna mark it false, we're gonna leave it default. And then when she tries to come over here and break that, she shouldn't be able to allow. She shouldn't be allowed. And there it is. Can't break anything. But if I come over here, we go to plan menu, we go to edit permissions. Now, we can add as many permissions as we want. So we can add her own permissions. And then we go in there, and this is where you add the players. Now you could do this just as easily by going to the pre-generated groups that are already listed in every claim. But I, I like to make it simple so that I know who's where and I don't get confused. So if we add that person's name again, it'll actually show that you got it right by showing their head. So if you know what they look like, you'll know for sure that you got it right. Now, unfortunately, the GUI is not quite as capable for given permissions, but you can still edit these within game commands. So you go to plan permission group. Oh, well, that's strange. If we just type the name in, maybe it'll work. And we do break. I don't know if it all needs to be capital or not. And let's set it to true. So now break for Aenea is set to true. Now, if she can come over here and break this, we'll know it, it was successful. And there we go. But the, the, the difference is this time, you should not be able to place that. So if you jump up and try to put it back, no. So this means inside of a claim, if you make a great big claim or a default claim, whatever, 
you can give as many subclaims within that claim that will fit. And you can give each subclaim their own individual permissions for individual people. They can be more than one person. I can make more than one person be able to do things in this claim or, or just one person. Deleting claims, like I said, really easy. You can do it with the GUI. Okay, so subclaim confirms. You always want to check and make sure it says subclaim before you try deleting subclaim because you might end up deleting your entire claim. All right, so that's how you delete a subclaim. And we'll do it again over here just to make sure. So if we go to plan menu and delete this and we go back, make sure subclaim. Okay, yeah, subclaim, delete the subclaim. All right, so that's the groups and permissions. Uh, basically anything you see in the plan menu in the global permissions, if you look, it's got the big capital letters on that given group of permissions. You can just copy these over. So like plan, permission, group. And we learned that if it doesn't show the group that you made, just type it in, it'll work. And then it also shows with the tab feature, but if you wanna just type it out, it'll show you every single one. And then if you don't know which, which one does what, you can go back and look and it'll tell you in plan menu what they do. Permission to use fence gates. Trample stops them or enables them from trampling farmland and turtle eggs, uh, target blocks, you know, so on and so forth. It gives a little description. So with permissions out of the way, we'll move on to the last few commands. All three of these are commands that are only accessible via typed out written commands. So flan transfer claim. And I'm going to give this to my lovely wife. Now it, now it belongs to her. So if she comes in here, and makes changes to the claim. She can break everything. This is, this, is her, this is her claim now. It's all hers. But now if she makes it so that I can't do anything, it'll be the other way around. So if she goes into the flan menu and then goes to global permissions and then sets it so that I can or cannot break, in this case, cannot break any blocks or place any blocks, it won't let me do it. It shows me that I'm breaking it, but it doesn't actually break. And it tells me this is Xenia's claim. So if you're in somebody's claim and say they've got a two, a two block hole that there's no way out of, oh God, I'm stuck. I can't, I can't break blocks. I can't place blocks. Oh, uh, she's even blocked me in. Oh man, she's a griefer. You can just do plan track. And then you just stand still for five seconds and Flans recognizes that you are trapped and there is no way out for you. And it teleports you to the top and out of their claim. And the last command that we can go over is unlock drops. It simply just makes it so that when you die, your death items are unlocked for the next uh, 6,000 ticks, which if you did the math on that, you'll know that it's X amount of seconds. I have not done the math. Uh, I believe it's probably like 10 minutes Unless you have Gravestone. If you have Gravestone mod, that's going to handle that. And I think by default, Flans is already set to blacklist any any kind of uh, permission listing that involves Gravestones to prevent people from dying in someone's claim and them not being able to get their stuff back because they can't interact or open containers or whatever it's listed as. So no need to worry. And, and if for whatever reason, the gravestone mod you are using or your server is using doesn't allow for you to get your stuff back, it is configurable. All you have to do is know the item ID and then you can tell your server owner or you can, as, your, as the server owner, you can go in and change that and blacklist that item so that players can get their stuff back. So anyway, that is all for the Flan tutorial. If you have any questions, please drop it down in the comments below. If you liked this video and it was any kind of help for you, hit that like button, consider subscribing. I put out some of these tutorials once in a while and I really uh, try to cover information that people don't often in tutorials on unheard of mods like this that are really nice and just little gems. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.